Looks like AMD needs to correct themselves a little bit, and so I should too. We've had some interviews going on as Computex 2022 wraps up, and so naturally there were a lot of questions, follow-ups to all of this Ryzen 7000 series Zen 5 announcements. And it looks like one of the interviews got something wrong, which AMD is now correcting. So there were questions about the 170 watt TDP because it sounded pretty high compared to previous generations of Ryzen. And in interviews, we had the information that this was actually going to be the PPT, the package power tracing. This is an interview with AMD's Robert Halleck. However, uh, AMD is now carefully walking back that information and clarifying. So basically that actually was the TDP. And the TDP limits, so this is a statement to Tom's hardware. I feel like I need to get out of the way. Um, so in a statement to Tom's hardware, AMD is clarifying that the TDP limits of the upcoming AMD socket AM5 is 170 watts TDP and the PPT goes up to 230 watts. And that their uh, reasoning behind this is this new TDP group will enable consider considerably more compute performance for high core count CPUs and heavy compute workloads. And this will sit alongside the 65 watt and 105 watt TDP groups that Ryzen is known for today. So it looks like you're still gonna be able to get parts that fit into the power limits that we're used to, but this enables them to launch some higher end, uh, higher powered chips as well. Now we'll see how all of that plays up. Um, but people were also wondering, okay, is this just allowing the socket to support that amount, but we won't actually see a Ryzen 7000 chip that features that much power draw. But it looks like um, in an official answer from Red, uh, on Reddit from uh, AMD Robert, which I would assume is Robert Halleck again here, uh, he did answer the question, so can you clear up the top TDP of Ryzen 7000 while you're at it? And he does say 170 watt TDP, 230 watt PPT. So it sounds like that is confirming there will be a Ryzen 7000 chip with a 170 watt TDP. Um, now that really does just bring it up almost as high as Intel's i9-12900K. So these aren't like power draws that are, you know, unheard of from high-end CPUs. It's just we're used to AMD drawing less. It'll be interesting to see how all of that goes. Um, but we've got a little bit more updates as well. So as part of this announcements, we saw that AMD claimed some AI in, uh, acceleration. We saw expanded instructions, AI acceleration, but we didn't have any details on what exactly that meant. Well, it looks like once again, Halleck in an interview is clarifying and he sp says specifically AVX512 VNNI for neural networking and AVX512 bloat 16 for inferencing. He says both are pretty nice speed ups. We're not using a fixed function acceleration. This could be something we could do with our Zilinx, I probably mispronounced that, whatever, acquisition. Um, and just getting into how like enthusiast workloads are increasingly using some AI accelerated features. Now, um, the video cards article I'm quoting here is clarifying that uh, bloat 16 here is probably actually meaning B float 16, BF 16. Um, so probably just a little uh, typo there on um, Halleck's part to clarify that. Um, also, there was a bit of questions on like, will all of the uh, CPUs actually have RDNA 2 GPUs on them? Is that standard? And it seems like the answer is yes. The IGP is standard. It's on all of the six nanometer IO dies, which has a small number of compute units built in. Now, they're very careful to say this is specifically to enable video encode and decode and most multiple display outputs. Um, they're very clearly not saying that these are designed for gaming, which would be a disappointment to me. I think they're... they're I don't know, I'd like to see some higher powered desktop APUs, similar to what they do uh, you know, with their mobile, you know, the Steam Deck's really cool and everything, um, but what if we got RDNA 2 graphics like in an actually solid APU on a desktop chip? I'd like to see what that could do for the budget gaming segment, but it looks like this might not be that. It also looks like people thinking that there won't be, um, 
you know, there, there could be some chips that, that leave off the iGPU and maybe use that space on the die for something else that looks like it's not going to be the case for Ryzen 7000. Also, some people were wondering if, uh, you know, uh, is Threadripper getting abandoned? <laughs> um, well, uh, here's, a, I think, a better quote on, on that uh, that I have from WCCF Tech here, but quoting another interview. Uh, this one's via Forbes from Robert Halleck again. And people question, uh, w like, okay, what is happening with Threadripper? Are we going to see another one? Are we going to see a successor to this? And Robert's answer is pretty straightforward. All I can say is Threadripper is not going anywhere. So uh, plans for Threadripper, but we're not getting a lot of details is basically what we've got out of that. Now, how about a small update to some Ra uh, Radeon RX 7000 RDNA 3 GPUs? Well, this isn't a huge one, but it does look like it's going to support DisplayPort 2.0, uh, which is interesting and, and nice to hear. And the source here is Kepler, who has had accurate leaks in the past, so it's not just completely random tweets on the internet. However, speaking of stuff that I may be a little less confident in, but I'll... Okay, the source here is Enthusiastic Citizen. Um which has had leaks in the past that I think have panned out, if I remember correctly. Um, but this is one, isn't one that I know as well. Now, this is uh, regarding the uh, release dates for Intel 13th Gen and, the, uh, and some AMD release dates as well, also next gen HEDT Sapphire Rapids. And basically, we're getting that they're rumored to launch in October. That would put only one year in between Alder Lake and Raptor Lake, but this does fit into what a lot of people are expecting. And that would also put it out there to compete with AMD's Ryzen 7000 launch in the fall. So there is room for AMD to maybe come out there a little bit before uh, Raptor Lake, if this is correct. Um, but they'd be coming out very close. And so, uh, if Raptor Lake is still supporting uh, DDR4 memory, which does seem to also be rumored here, then I'm I'm worried about AMD's you know uh, adoption price with the DDR5 only at least initially. I don't know. There's a lot of questions there, uh, competition-wise. Also, uh, if we want to kind of summarize a lot of the rumors here, the um. Uh, it looks like there will probably be a Z700 platform for these Raptor Lake uh, CPUs, but they will still be compatible with the 600 series motherboards uh, from Intel's 12th gen. And if we want to look at the rumored specs, we're now seeing um, you know that kind of summarized here by video cards. It looks like we are expecting to see you know the max core count go up and we're looking to see some increases to the cache uh, and still, like I said, expecting to have some DDR4 support along with DDR5, uh, even on to this update. All right, now a few other things today. Uh, one thing is that we had seen NVIDIA's um, light hash rate unlocked, but it looks like their latest driver update locked it again. However, you can just roll back to the previous driver. So this actually seems kind of pointless to actually like deter mining. So in my opinion, this is actually just a bad thing for PC gamers because the only miners that this is going to affect are the you know people who bought a GPU to play games on, but also mine a little bit on the side. They're the ones who will want to have the latest GPU drivers up to date for their gaming, but now they're gonna have to make the choice, do I wanna have updated GPU drivers for gaming or do I want to be able to uh, get the full value out of my mining on the side? So I think that this only hurts those small-time miners um, and the big miner, uh, you know, farms <laughs> that were buying up all the GPUs. Uh, this really doesn't do anything to help. But you know, mining value is down right now anyway, so I don't think this has an impact on the uh, uh, GPU market much right now anyway. Uh, and that's also my thought about this, which is we're also seeing a report that there were a huge number of laptop uh, NVIDIA GPUs, like RTX 3060 and RTX 3070 laptop versions, 
being turned into desktop GPUs and sold to miners for the express reason that they weren't hash rate limited. Although now this seems like it's kind of outdated and old news, but is getting reported on at the moment. So anyway, there's where a bunch of laptop GPUs went. Now, um, I think this is interesting. So Sony shares official PlayStation PC sales, right? So their PC game ports uh, looks like Sony is extremely happy with the results and they're forecasting huge growth next fiscal year. So I would assume that that means we're going to be seeing at least one, if not multiple, major Sony uh, ports next year if they're expecting huge growth over what they already got, uh, considering that you know what they already had was Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War, uh, Days Gone, and it looks like we're seeing that Zero Dawn sold over 2.39 million copies on PC. If we dig in here, I think we got some more uh, numbers with God of War uh, selling almost a million copies at this point as well. So they've made a lot of money with these ports, and I think that they have acquired a, uh, what is it, Nixus as a um, port, uh, port-focused studio to port their, their games over. So I'm excited to hopefully be seeing even more PlayStation games on PC. Now, a few last little bits. Um, how about a Steam Deck competitor type handheld? So a Windows gaming PC uh, that's handheld. And it looks like this one may actually try to compete even in terms of price, whereas a lot of the other competitors are looking to offer a higher end uh, experience, but for a lot more money. It looks like they'll be offering a, a, a model as low as $299 but that this one would be Intel Alder Lake U based, and we don't have specifics on exactly which chip that would be. But it is looking like there'll be some more expensive versions based on AMD Zen 3 Plus with RDNA 2 graphics. That sounds more similar to what we're, we, we see in the Steam Deck. It looks like uh, video cards here is thinking that that would be a Ryzen 5 50, uh, sorry, 6600U, and that the uh, AMD pricing would start at $500 for the 64 gigabyte storage model and go up from there. So anyway, I'm interested to see what happens here. Looks like the Loki Max could even go up to a Ryzen 7 6800U. And last thing I wanna mention is that we might have um, some specs for the PS5 Pro as well as the updated Series X and S. Now, this just might be wrong and could be a guess, but the T TV manufacturer, TCL, was giving a conference um, where they were outlining their expectations for these uh, future uh, hardware specs. And it looks like they're expecting this to come out, first of all, in 2023 to 2024 with um, basically RX7, uh, ah, where'd it go? I clicked it and it disappeared, guys. There, I can use my back button. Anyway, with RX 7700 XT GPU specs uh, offering a 4K 60 to 120 native render and upscaling up to 8K 60 to 120 output. So that would certainly be interesting. Um, and that, you know, it would also line up with expectations that an RX 7700 XT might give something like 6900 XT like performance, which can give obviously 4K 60 native. And, you know, with FSR 2.0 type upscaling, I'm sure you could upscale to 8K. So I think there could be something to this. I don't know how much insider information TCL would have though, and how much this would just be uh, speculation. All right, guys, I've got to get ready for work. I hope all of you have an excellent day.